Wake up, Cretan. Trent barked as one of his assistants released a vine from his palm, whipping Maverick's back. The thorns on his vines ripped through Maverick's scales, causing him to wake from his stupor and cry out in agony. His eyes rolled open, and he found himself sitting before King Trent's lavish mahogany throne. Large Ferorian warriors clustered around the king, all staring at him intently, ferocity in their eyes. Maverick attempted to move and was terrified upon discovering that his wrists and ankles were bound with thick ivy. Trent continued, Did you truly believe that you would be able to simply waltz through Deep Haven Woods unnoticed? Maverick remained silent, hardly able to form words. No? What a pity. Julian, if you would please. The guard proceeded with another ruthless whipping. Through tears of pain, Maverick looked up to establish eye contact with his torturer, hoping to elicit some feelings of sympathy. To his dismay, the man wore a leather hood over his head. Ah, wh what do you want from me, King? Maverick screamed. The sounds of Maverick's suffering made the Ferorians laugh. Trent dragged his tree stump leg around as he paced in front of Maverick and said, Oh good, now I've captured your attention. What is your name, boy? And who sent you? Who created the light that struck from the sky? Are you conspiring with Rhizozin? Uh, what are you talking about? Maverick shouted. My name is Maverick, and I had nothing to do with the light. I've come here on an unrelated mission. I needed some Illumia leaves to make an elixir for my sick grandfather. Illumia leaves. I see that you've also stolen some of our tillies while you were here. Trent said as he pulled handfuls of the plump yellow fruits from Maverick's satchel and ate one in front of him. Maverick couldn't help but notice how hideous the king looked at that moment. He had cold, sinister eyes and a crooked smile. Fruit juice dripped down the twisted tip of his wooden hooked nose and into his twig beard. He wiped his sticky fingers on his spotted fur cape and continued to speak while chewing. So, you came here to steal our fruit and medicine. Yet, you're claiming that you had nothing to do with the destruction of the Illumia. Filthy liar. Julian, the guard commenced with another painful lashing. Ah, yes! But I didn't even get any of the leaves in time. Besides, if I needed them, what purpose would I have in destroying the tree? Your guards chased me away right before it happened. Are you telling me that you managed to sneak into Deep Haven before the war began? More lies. There is no way that you would have made it past the Great Fence before it was destroyed. <sighs> I snuck through the thick bushes at the edge of where the Great Fence meets our shore in Moroa. Maverick said through gasps and groans. It led me to your groves, which are plentiful with produce. Despite the pain he felt, Maverick tried his best to sound sarcastic. That's why I figured taking just a few would have gone unnoticed. I wouldn't have had to go through so much trouble in the first place if you Ferrarians weren't so stingy at the weekly trading posts. Trent lunged towards him and said, I organize those posts myself. How dare you call me stingy, you half-wit. I consider myself more than generous for helping your pathetic tribe at all. How dare you speak to me this way, after I was kind enough to spare your life and cure you of my warrior's poison dart. Maybe I should have left your infected body in the soil. Trent spat as he shouted in Maverick's face, covering him with chewed bits of fruit. Well, being that I kept you alive, I might as well put you to good use. Since you were so keen to rob us of our Illumia leaves, how about you fetch us some more? I thought it was the only Illumia in all of Deephaven, Maverick said. It is. That's why you will be venturing to the Forbidden Mountains to see what you can find, Trent said with a devilish smirk. I will do no such thing. That is a suicide mission. It's said that no traveler has ever returned. Besides, how do you know if there's anything out there? You have no other choice, brat. Either fulfill this duty or face execution. Maverick began to drown out the king's words and formulated a plan. He had no intention of following Trent's commands, and certainly not on facing death. Grateful for his incredible new ability, he decided to form an icicle behind his back to cut through his wrist restraints. He spotted two guards blocking an exit on the king's far left, who both had their full attention on Trent. He planned to quickly slice the vines binding his ankles and sideswipe the guards by shooting a jet of water from his palm to blast them out of the way. His first few attempts at forming the icicle failed, yet he finally managed to create one sharp enough to cut through the ivy. 